Three, two, one. Welcome, Warriors of Valhalla. This is Total War Titan, and thank you for stopping by today. Today, we are back in Rome Total War, and today, we have the Pikes of Macedon going up against the Legions of Rome. Historically, the Romans bested Macedon with elite ma uh, phalanx breaking troops. So let's see if the Romans can replicate their feats in a video game. And right now they have some pretty heavy cavalry up on this hill that I'm worried about. So as I'm bringing the pikes of Macedon, they know where my troops are, most of them. But I'm going to line them up in this hill, in this forest, to kind of keep them concealed. That's kind of what they're doing. I don't know what that is. Yeah, there's their general, and more troops, some levies. So right now we're just waiting for things to go by, so I'm going to fast forward some. All right. I have my uh, phalanx is ready. So yeah, they've moved up a bit, and I'm going to go ahead and un-fast forward here, I'm sorry. So yeah, right now my current plan is this, alright? So the way I have my troops deployed... First of all, I want to see this. This just looks awesome. Yeah, so currently what I have right now, the way I have my army set up, because pikes are very tricky to use, alright? They're powerful in one direction. You have to make sure the enemy comes from the front when you're dealing with um, pikes. So the way I'm dealing with that and dealing with the possibility of getting flanked is three things. Alright, first of all, I have the pikes in the center. Alright? Then I have spears on the flank, because cavalry will like to hit your flanks. So you want some good cavalry, a uh, good anti-cavalry unit that can still uh, deal with the uh, getting flanked. So you're going to have good anti-cavalry units on the flanks. But you also have to worry about foot troops attacking your flanks too. Because if the spears fall, you're going to lose your phalanx. Because your phalanx relies on those spears for their flank protection. Alright, so that's where these second, this sec back of line of infantry comes in. Alright, I have some very heavy thorax swordsmen. Very good in uh, melee infantry. Not the world's best melee infantry. But these guys are good at holding the line. That's what Mastodon is, excels at. I don't know why the music isn't here right now. Whereas the Romans, they excel at breaking the line. Alright, because they have some Praetorian Guard, very heavily melee infantry, Triarii. And some very heavy shock cavalry here. They excel at breaking the line. So if these guys, because I doubt they're going to be able to break this line once it forms up in the center. The center is probably our strongest part because this is where the pikes are. What I'm worried about is the flanks falling. Because if the flanks fall, the pikes are going to be left vulnerable. And I'm going to see if this strategy will apply to Rome as well. Not Rome, Medieval. So yeah, right now, right now, right now I'm waiting for the Romans. I'm going to try and bait and attack. I'm going to send up my skirmishers. On me. So I'm going to try and bait them down the hill. Because pikes... I don't, I'm not good enough at this game to uh, use them in an offensive role yet. And I might later, but for now, keep them in phalanx. So yeah, now the battle has begun, we have our skirmishers shooting at the enemy. They have their skirmishers returning. They're sending their spears and their praetorians down the hill at maximum speed. They're charging. They have their cavalry right around the flank. This is what I was worried about. I didn't bring very much cavalry, only two units. It. So companion cavalry, they're all good units, but I didn't bring very much of it. And yeah, this is what I was talking about. Here they are charging my uh, flanks. I'm going to send some melee infantry to back them up. So they are cutting down some of my skirmishers. Here they are charging my flanks. They had to send their infantry on the, to occupy the main phalanx. This was a mistake there on their part, because they needed to send in... Because cavalry is vulnerable in melee, especially against spears. They needed to send in the infantry to turn these flanks. 
So that was a mistake on their part. They are doing it on this side, though. And I'm sending in, in my infantry immediately to hold these flanks. Because these pikes can hold them on their own. But I need to keep the flanks secure. And over here, and this is awfully close to the pike the flanks breaking. And there's a gladiator spearman. Because these guys are off fighting some Praetorian guard. So I have these thorax spearmen here to prevent these guys from being outflanked. Over here, I'm sending in my general's bodyguards to keep that flank going. We have several units of spear and swordsmen over here. And they did break their uh, gladiator spear, but these guys are kind of watching the flank of the, of the uh, foot canyons. And these pikemen are doing strong. We're not losing very many men in this attack. Well, the enemy is just dying before it, so in the front we're winning. These are the Praetorians. Very elite infantry. Over here with the spear wall, it's not so Peachy King, though, because things are a lot closer with the Hastati and the shield there. I think I have the advantage in this fight because it's a very heavy infantry unit be attacked by a medium infantry unit. And that's not everything. We have their cavalry in a V here. I did, they did get behind my shield bearers, but I got them behind my... got swords, swords and my general behind them. Over here things are uh, also going pretty crazy. This is a very fast-paced battle when the action starts, trust me. So yeah, they are continuing to charge my troops with their heavy cavalry, which is causing a large number of casualties. And we are fighting the Praetorian Guard here. We are trusting them with the numbers, though. And we're still trying to keep the Pike's flank secure. Over here, they are beginning to flank the Pikes and cause some casualties, though. But I do have these Thorax Spearmen. He wants to deal with these cavalry, which is going to be a pretty serious issue. They should be able to break them. They are breaking my spears. Not my spears, my archers, but... Uh, they were kind of caught between the Pike Wall and the Praetorian Guard. And you know anything about the Praetorian Guard, they're in heat. But those Pikes are doing poorly. So here we have my Thorax um, Swordsman engaging the Praetorian Guard, countering their flank. It's not going to fix it immediately because they're still cutting it down, but it's going to help out. Over here we have some uh, Cavalry versus my Shield Bears and Praetorian Guard as well. Right now I'm trying to break one of their flanks. They're trying to break one of my flanks. The flank that breaks sooner wins. They have some cavalry engaging my general though. That's not very helpful. So I'm going to send some uh, spearmen to take him out. I'm going to send some spearmen to take him out. They have their cavalry up here. That's going to be a problem. Praetorian cavalry. But things are immediately going to be starting breaking. They're breaking some of their archers. They're pulling some of the troops back. But some of the first ones in are breaking, and things have actually quieted down along the large part of the line. Killed so many of them. This attack. Charging pikes from the front is futile. He should have focused more on... Uh, I understand why he did it, but I wouldn't have sent so many troops. He did the frontal charge to keep my pikes pinned in place so he can flank them. I just was able to counter their flanking movement and break their flanking forces. And actually have counter flanks here. So these pikes are here. I'm going to leave them in formation. So I do not want to risk it because they have so many cavalry running about. I do not want to risk it. But I'm going to send these guys up here. To try and turn their flank more. Their general is in this fight. Well, it was in this fight. He's routing now. I have some Thorax Spearin dealing with their Praetorian cavalry. My general is still pretty in danger here. But we are breaking their units. And I think we won the battle. Yeah, as I said, it was over quickly. And this is why you do not charge pikes head on. You always flank them. You always try to flank. You, you, as I understand keeping a few lower quality units to pin them in place. Even some higher quality ones so they last longer so you have more time to flank them. But you always flank them, especially with cavalry. Hit them in the rear. And when you're flying pikes, it's essential to guard your flanks with units that can be outflanked. Swordsmen and spearmen, especially a reserve that you can send in when the flanks get hit hard, as they were there. I always worry about them breaking, but as you can tell, they were the ones who broke today. So I hope you liked today's video, folks. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more awesome action like this. Total War Titan, out!